So far we've dived deeper in understanding the importance of getting a solid base grade using the primary and secondary color grading tools. In this lesson we'll learn about Resolve's qualifiers and how to get a clean selection together with applying and tracking power windows. When combined, qualifiers and power windows can create the most precise and confined keys that can furthermore be manipulated with the primary and secondary tools. Let's get rolling. To start working on keys or what Resolve refers to as qualifiers, head over to the qualifiers tab. The qualifier interface is made out of two main parts. On the left we have the graphical and numeric controls of the color components divided by hue, saturation and luminance which you can adjust manually. On the left we have the selection range where you can pick a selection of pixels and furthermore finesse the mat with a few other parameters. To demonstrate that let's create a new node for the skin tone. Next let's sample a range of pixels from his forehead. And all of a sudden you can see how our hue, saturation and luminance automatically got selected for the ranges that we sampled. However, nothing happened in the image itself and that's because the qualifier only acts as a mask or a mat if you wish, as you probably are familiar from other programs, which becomes visible only when we are in highlight mode. You can see here our selection and the mask and alongside with other items that fell into the same range of selection as the skin tone. From here you can go on and use other tools like the hue versus hue or the primary control wheels to adjust our colors within that range. We can go ahead and play with the denoise values, the blur radius, the clean white, the clean black and the in and out ratios or a combination of those. For this particular selection let's just stick with the denoise and move it until we have a clean selection. Let's refine the range a little bit more and play with the saturation and the luminance in the meantime. We can always play with the center and width on the hue and move it left or right until our selection is clean and includes all the swatches that we want. Now this is where we want to limit our selection to only the skin tone visible in the image and not the table, not the other items in the image. That's where we are heading over to the power windows and choose a circular window and place it roughly around his face and hand. And this way we can limit the controls only to his skin tone and leave out anything else in the image that was selected by our range selection in the qualifier. I wanted to point out that while you are in highlight mode you can also select this black and white mask where you can actually see the defined mask that's going to pick up your selection. Let's switch back to normal highlight mode and at this point we can manipulate those colors that we selected with our range in the qualifier. We'll go ahead and rotate the red hue towards a more healthier skin tone since it was sitting on the green side a little bit. Maybe add a little bit of brightness in the gamma and we are pretty much done. So we can see how our range picks up only the colors in that skin tone which were restricted with the power window. If our person or item that we selected with the power window moves out of the range, we'll have to track that power window. We can start from the place that we initially added the power window on and then we can head over to the tracker which is this window here and simply we can just track it forward or backward from the place that we are at. And then place the playhead back to where we were and then track backward. And you can see how our power window follows the face of the person or the item that we are going to have restricted with our power window. By this time you can imagine how powerful of a combination is between the qualifier which qualifies the range of the pixels that you want and the power window which keeps it even more restricted to that particular region in the image. So at this point you can have multiple qualifications in your image coupled with static or tracked power windows. For instance if we would like to make his shirt color a little bit deeper we'll have to make that adjustment into a separate node and the best way to do that is using a parallel node as opposed to a serial node as before so that the colors blend together better into each other resulting in an organic feel. Let's label this node shirt and just like before let's head over to our qualifier 
and select the range from his shirt. You can see how automatically our hue, saturation and luminance got selected. Let's check our selection in the highlight mode. And you can see we have a pretty good selection, but we got a lot of other stuff selected that we didn't want to. So in that case, again, we'll head over to our power windows. And instead of having a circular window, let's select a curved window. We can add an outside softness and an inside softness. Let's make sure that we have a good selection. Make it wider maybe. Maybe move the luminance handles a little bit. We are also picking up some of the colors next to the shirt, but they could benefit from our adjustments anyway, so we'll leave them there for now. If not, keep adjusting the hue, saturation and luminance until the selection is clean. Let's denoise it a little bit and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and head over to the curves panel and click on that swatch. And we can see that it selected our swatch exactly where we needed it. And then from this point, we can make it with a greener shade. Then head over to the saturation. Again, select that same swatch and make it maybe less saturated or more saturated, whatever we want. Let's make sure that our handles are wider so it picks up a wider selection. Let's say like that, then head over to the hue versus luminance, again select the same swatch and let's make the color a little bit deeper. A little bit goes a long way. You can see if we disable this node how his shirt became a little bit more bluer than it is. We can leave it there, let's see how this works out. I can see how the mask is not picking up his arm. In that case, we can modify the power window by just clicking on the path points and dragging them to adapt our region. And let's see if we need to track it. We probably don't have to. Why not? Let's just track it. And at this point, we have a pretty strong selection that we can work with without affecting anything else in the image. I wanted to show you one more trick in isolating certain parts of an image using a combination of qualifiers and power windows. Let's say, for instance, if you want to manipulate the colors of the jeans in this image, and in the meantime, the environment around it. Let's start by creating a node just for the jeans and hop in our qualifier tab and just take a sample of the color range. Let's go into highlight mode and check our key. And since we're here, I wanted to show you what footage from cameras that are recording in 8-bit color depth are doing to your image. You can see the compression of the image will not allow you to pull finer masks as in the case of a 10-bit or 12-bit like in the image before, which was from a Blackmagic camera. This one here is from a Sony a6500, which records in 8-bit color depth. Just a side note, so you know how far you can go in pulling qualifiers. Let's refine our mask even more by moving the center. Okay, let's denoise it. Let's head over to the power windows and use a curve to just do a power window around his jeans. And let's go ahead and track it. You can track from any time position point in the clip. Doesn't have to be from the beginning or from the end. We have our tracker, exit this mode, and now we can manipulate the colors of his jeans by maybe going in the hue versus hue and sample the color from there and rotate it maybe on the green side. But now we want to manipulate the environment around the gene. So how can we do that without affecting the gene's color and the correction we just did on it? So for that, let's just create an outside node and name it outside. And what the outside node is, you'll notice that we have an alpha channel connection here between the gene's node and the outside node. So this basically inverts the qualifier of the gene's node so that you can adjust everything outside of it here. And to show you that, let's head over to our highlight mode. You can see how everything is affected but the jeans mask this time. In other words, here is the jeans mask and here is everything outside of it. Let's exit this mode. And now we can manipulate this outside node without affecting the correction we made on the jeans. Of course, we might need to do a better job at qualifying his genes. For instance, this part is missing from here. We can maybe go back and work on it a little bit more. Exit the highlight mode. 
So now we have separate nodes for each of this correction that lets us manipulate the colors independently. Well, I hope by this point you're starting to comprehend the immense control you can have over isolating certain regions in your image using the combination of resolves qualifiers and power windows. Go ahead and practice what you've learned in this video since this is the only way you'll discover the true potential that lies within these tools. See you in the next video.